Okay, so this is like part two of the video. Uh, in my last video, I took a numerical derivative of data, but I made that data in the program too. And I wanna show you how to do this with actual real data. Um, <clears throat> so in this case, what I did was I took a crumpled up piece of paper and I dropped it above a sonic motion detector. So it gave me position versus time. Uh, and then I want to, yes, I use Logger Pro from Vernier. Uh, I'll put a link down below. Um, and it does calculate the velocity for you too, but I want to calculate myself. So there's a couple steps that we have to do in order to do this in Python, but we're going to do it on the lowdown, right? And there are other packages that will just take numerical derivatives, but I think it's really useful to actually do it yourself and see what happens. And there's more than one way to do it. In, in the last uh, case, I built each data point one at a time. So I always found the derivative at this point using the previous one. Now, in this case, I'm going to have all the data to begin with. So I can use a different method to take the derivative. So let's just uh, number these uh, values as uh, 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So these each one will be uh, a data point, y0, t0, y1, t1, and so forth. And let's say I want to find the derivative at this point. Well, in, in the last case, let me get a little stick or something. Let's use this pencil. I used, if I wanted to find, if I didn't know this data point already, I just used the slope between this point and the point before it to find that. Uh, but that ignores what happens in the future. So actually what I'm going to do is to find the slope at this point using this point and that point. So I will actually have this is the slope of the line I'm trying to find. So I'm going to use, to find the slope, we'll call that V2. V2 is going to depend on uh, point 0.3 and point 0.1. And now I can just use the normal slope formula. So this is going to be, for V2, it would be uh, Y3 minus Y1. And then I don't have one time interval, I have two. But in fact, I may not even have evenly spaced time intervals, so I'm not even going to do that. Instead, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say T3 minus t1. So that's the slope between point 0.1 and 3, and I'm going to assign that to the point in the middle. And that's that's my simple formula. There are better formulas, like I said, but this is the one I'm going to use. Okay, so now you'll notice something here. If I have these four data points, I can find the slope at point 1. It's going to be this. I can find the slope at point 2. I can find the slope at point 3. But I can't do 4, and I can't do 0. Okay, because I don't have another point on the other side. So I'm going to get fewer data for the derivative than I will for the data itself. But in this case, I'm just missing two points. If I have a thousand data points, who really cares, right? You're missing two data points. Oh, boo-hoo. Um, I'm just joking. That's trying to be funny. Okay, so let's implement this in Python. Now, there's a couple things that we need to do, uh, and I'm going to do this in GlowScript v Python, and there's some tricks. I'm going to do this as the most basic way that, that possible. Uh, what I've already done, I'm not going to show you. I took, like I said, a, a wadded up piece of paper. I wanted something just to give me position. I dropped it above a motion detector for a very short amount of time. I got very few data points, like 20 or something. Uh, I copied that data and I pasted it into a Google spreadsheet because that's the way I can easily share it between computers. And uh, so I'm going to show you what to do next, because there's a, some weird stuff that I do that other people don't do, and that's fine. Everyone's got to do their own thing. So let's switch over here to uh, Python. So here we are. Hello, Python. Uh, so the first thing is I'm using GlowScript v Python. If you are using actual Python, there are really useful ways to load a data file into Python, and I'm not going to do that. Okay, so this switch over here, this is my, this is my spreadsheet. This, these are all my values that I want to put in there. So that's time and position. And the velocity I'm not going to use because uh, Logger Pro calculated that, and I want to do that myself. Okay, and I'm going to get a little bit different values because I'm doing it differently than they do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy all my time data. And this, this, is kind of, this is kind of, you know, a little weird, but it, it works the best. And now I want to... Uh, make a list of my time values. Uh, and I'm going to try to show you all the important things about a list, even though I do have videos on that. And if I forget to link them, just comment down below and I'll post those. So I'm going to say t 
is equal to a list. And I'm going to put uh, a square bracket and an open bracket, and then I'm just going to paste that data. I copied it, and I'm going to paste it. And it's not going to work, right? Because normally in Python, a list, let me make this a little bit bigger, a list has to have uh, commas between all those things. And, and you can see that I don't have those commas. So this wouldn't, if I run this, it's going to say, what's up with this? Okay. I'm going to just put the commas in by hand. Now you think that's stupid and it's going to take a long time. Well, I only have like 20 data points, so it's not going to take a long time. And also I can do this. I can say, use the comma key and the arrow, comma arrow. Look at this. That's not take long, right? That's way easier than just doing something fancy. And there's always this, this boundary between how do you make it fancy or what? And I don't even need to put it all in one line. I don't care. Just leave it like that. No one cares. Okay. That way I don't have to load a file. Now there is a way in GlowScript that you can put a file online and then have that read it. I just like doing it this way. I've even done it with like really long data sets and just, just put the commas there. If there is another trick, um, I can copy that data and then paste it into the text editor and everywhere I see a return, replace that with a comma and then it just does a find and replace. That works pretty, that works pretty well too. Okay, so now let's just see how that works. I can, let's just print T. Let's do a couple things for this. Print T. It'll print all the values as a list. We can check to make sure that's working. Uh, and see there, that's how you would normally like to see it. I wonder if I could just copy that and paste it. I wonder what happens. Let's see. T2 equals, and now let's print T2. If, if so, I just found something else that, that I didn't actually know. Uh, print T2. Okay, that worked. So that, that I'm going to change this to T. And then the only reason to do that is that it takes up less space in the program. It looks a bit nicer. That's fine. Okay, now uh, let me save this too. And I will give you the code. Um, let's see. Data derivative. I have terrible names for my stuff. Okay, there it goes. Saved. Did it save? There it goes. Okay. Uh, so now the, a couple other things. When I have a list, the important things is I can index each thing in that list. So I can say that first value in the list is 0.05. Watch this. Print T0. The first element in the list is 0. So if I print T0, it's going to give 0.05. If I print the next one, which would be print T1, it should be 0.1. Let's just make sure that works. And that does indeed work. <clears throat> okay, then also just, just for fun, I can print out the last list, the last element, print t minus 1 is the last, so it goes from the backwards. Uh, so the last one is 1, so that should print 1. Okay, so everything's working. Okay, one more thing <clears throat> that I need is the length of the list. I don't want to count all the things, so I can actually print that. Print uh, len t, that's going to return the length of the list, 20. Okay, now I need the other value, the other data, which is y, y. I'm going to call it y because it's dropping, even though it says x over here. Uh, so I'm just going to copy that right here, control C, uh, go back over here and paste it, and then add my commas. Oops, don't do that. See, this doesn't take long. Even if it was, you know, 50, 100 data points, it doesn't take that long. And I'm going to print Y, and I'm going to do my trick. I'm going to copy this and just paste it right there. There, now it looks a little bit better. Okay, and then let's just do print. Oh, that's print T. Oops. I'm going to print Y. and then paste that. Paste it in for Y. And then print Y again, just to make sure it's working. Okay, so we're good. So we have all our data. <clears throat> Let's do the first thing. I just wanna plot the data. Let's just plot the data just to make sure that we know what's going on. So, uh, you know, one way to do this, first I gotta make a graph. G1 equals graph, uh, X title equals T in seconds y title equals y no y in meters and then oops and then i will say width 
equals 500. Let's do 450 and then height equals 200. That way it will fit on the screen the best. Uh, <clears throat> now I can make a graph. I'm going to call this FY equals G dots. I'm going to use G dots. I usually use D curve. Uh, G dots just put data points there. Color dot blue. Now, how do I go through the list? Okay, so there's a couple ways to, to traverse a list. Um, I'm, but I want to traverse both the lists. So here's what I'm going to do. Watch this. I'm going to say for I in range len T. And it's going to print I. So this will go through the length. This will go through uh, all the values in from 0 to the length of T. And, it'll, and each one of those will be a number, the index number. So this should go 1 through was it 19 or, or 20? I can't remember. Okay, through nine. it's 20 points, but it started at zero. Okay, so now I could I could print, watch this, TI. So now I is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this should print out all the times. And there you go. There's all my times. So that works. Now I don't want to do that. I want to plot well, T versus Y. So I'm actually going to say FY.plot. And then what I want for my X coordinate, it's going to be TI. What I want for my Y coordinate, it's going to be YI. And that's it. I don't need to increment I. I don't need to do anything because it's doing all that for me. It's going through and changing the I value. And then I reference the, uh, that element in T and Y. And there's my graph. Okay. So that's pretty nice. So that's, if you have the data, that's how you would plot the data. And if you're using, this is in GlowScript or WebVPython, if you're using some other Python package in Jupyter Notebooks, there's, it's different. Okay, you do it a different way. Okay, so now I have that. Now what I want to do is to calculate the velocity. So let's just go ahead and make a new list. I'm going to say uh, V equals an empty list, and that's where my velocity is going to go. Now remember, I want to go from this second data point which is i equals 1, to the last one, which is i equals 18, not 19. So I'm actually going to do this. And I can reuse the indices, but I'm going to use a different one. For j in range 1 to length of t minus 1. So if I put the 1 there, it says start at 1, don't start at 0. And then it go to the second to last data point. And let's, do, let's print this out just to make sure it's working. Print j so you'll see here I, I go from 1 to 18 instead of 0 to 19 so I'm not gonna have that last data point I'm not gonna have the first data point and that's good um, okay so now I can calculate the velocity v temp that's my temporary velocity it's gonna be uh, if I'm on point j it's going to be equal to uh, y j plus 1 minus y j minus 1 right so that's going to be the point before it minus the point behind it and then I need to divide by uh, the change in time which is going to be t j plus 1 minus t j minus 1 and it's going to work right because j minus 1 is 0 though if I have j as 1 1 minus 1 is 0 that's that first element okay but I'm assigning this to uh, the velocity j and so but I'm just calculating it as a temporary thing now I'm going to add that to my list. So V equals V plus, put it in square brackets, V temp. And then I'm going to, I'm going to print out V just so we can see what it looks like. Where's that other print? Did I get rid of the other print? Okay. So let's run this. Okay, so there's my velocities. I did it. Now I just want to plot those. And in fact, uh, can I plot this? I think I can plot these both in the same axes because uh, this goes from 0 to negative 3. No, let's not. So let's just make, um, let's make, call this FV equals G dots, color equals color dot red. Uh, let's not plot this. So I'm just going to comment out this line. Actually, I guess just comment out both those. And then down here, I can do the same kind of thing. I'll just say for J in range length of V, right, because I don't want to plot all of the T's because that, that's more than V. Um, actually, I do need the T's. 
So what I'm actually going to do is go back and do this range one uh, length of t minus one. I do need to do that. Uh, so I'm going to go from one to 18. And I'm going to plot fv dot plot. Uh, the t value is going to be tj, which is not going to start at zero, so I'm not going to get that point. And then I have vj. And that should do it. And there's my velocity. And you'll notice that it's going to be a little bumpy. That's actually okay, right? Because the data is bumpy. When you take derivatives of finite data elements, uh, it's not going to be smooth. And there are ways to smooth it out, but, but I think the important thing is this is something that's easiest to understand. Okay, You can smooth it out by actually using more data points for each time. And I think what uh, GlowScript, I mean, uh, Vernier does is they actually give you the same uh, velocity for that first data point. They use the second, the, the slope between these two. And for this one, they use these three. And then for the next one, they use these five, right? These five data points. So if they can use five, they, they do. If they don't, they choose what they have. So in this last data point, they'll find the slope using the one before that. We could probably build the model like that, but I like to make things super easy that's understandable. Uh, so I will put a link to my previous numerical derivative uh, down below. I will put a link to this code. Um, I thought I'd do something else. There is a, I have a tutorial on lists, and I have a tutorial on graphing. If I remember to put those in there, will. But I always forget things, you know, because I just like to do the physics and the Python. But anyway, I hope that helps, and I'll talk to you guys later.